Cooperative Legacy Project interview number 24, January 6, 2005. We're visiting with former Aurora Co-op Oil Company Director and South Dakota Farmers Union State Board Member, Ken Hartz. Ken, um, where and when were you born? Oh, I was born in Aurora County uh, in uh, November of 1938. 1938, okay. Um, and right in this vicinity? Uh, yes, about uh, west, uh, four miles from Stickney. Well, it was northwest of Stickney. Northwest of Stickney. Northwest okay. of Stickney. Okay. I moved uh, moved once and it uh, moved about four miles ah. <laughs> to the present where I live now. Okay. When did your uh, family originally settle out in this area? Well, my great grandfather came here in about 1882, I think it was. And uh, my grandfather came somewhere in that area in, in, uh, in that time, too. In fact, he homesteaded, my grandfather homesteaded in Crystal Lake Township about, oh, eight miles west of here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those were the original homesteads? As far as I know, yes. Mm -hmm. Where were they originally from? They were from Germany. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and I know you've got one brother. Uh, what brothers and sisters? I have two brothers and four sisters. Okay. Okay. What are their all their names? Oh, my brother Ed and brother Dave and my sister Caroline, Mildred, Barbara, and Donna. Are they uh, any of them involved in farming now? I know Ed has been. But... Uh, br brothers, both Ed and, and Dave farm, mm -hmm. and uh, well, three of the sisters that lived in the Aurora County area here, they they all farm with their husbands. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. well. My sister Millie doesn't farm anymore, she, but uh, yeah. the other two still do some farming. And, like, one sister in Michigan, she, they farmed, oh, for until he retired, I guess you'd say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was your, your father's name? Yeah. Albert Hartz. Yeah. And you want to talk about him a little bit? What sort of person he was, you know? Well, I think he was about, he was about it. Co-op-minded and farmers' unions you can get around this area. He he was uh, helped start the Aurora Co-op in Stickney back in oh 1957, I believe is when they started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as far as I know, as long as I can remember, we went to farmers' union meetings. We had a local Pleasant Lake that uh, we went to. That was between that and the school activity and church was about the only thing you went to back in those days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was long, long before television, so oh, yeah. was a fat competition <laughs> in the evenings. Yeah, yeah I didn't, we didn't have a television until I was out of high school. Mm, okay. How about your mother? My mother originated from Montana. Oh. And uh, that's where she grew up, anyway. She was born in Omaha, Nebraska. And uh, that's where my dad went out to Montana to work with his brothers, and I guess that's where they met, up in, uh, in the Mile City and Billings area. Mm -hmm. What was her name? Her name was Marion. Okay. Her maiden name was Roberts. Mm -hmm. uh, you, have a, you have some early memories of what life was like out here on the farm in the 40s? I suppose we start remembering things in the, around the World War II era, maybe. Yeah, it's probably probably after World War Two more than anything. Yeah. But uh, well, yeah, we didn't have any electricity back then until about 1950 is when we got electricity where I grew up. So I spent the first 12 years of my life without electricity. So there's not too many people know you know do that yeah. anymore. And uh, yeah, we uh, milk cows of course and and had chickens and. and Back then, we didn't even have a farmhand or a loader to haul hay. We went out and pitched it on the hay rack and took it to the cows and, and pitched it off on to, to feed them. Mm -hmm. so, of course, we didn't have several hundred head like they do now. It's yeah. probably more like 40, 50, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People are farming a lot less acres. Oh, yes, yeah. A lot more farms out here. Yeah, a lot more farms then, yeah. Mm -hmm. When you were young, did you always want to farm? Well, yes, I guess as far as I know I did. You, you didn't have any aspirations for something else? Not really, no. Okay. okay. 
Uh, your dad encouraged you to do that? Oh, yes, I, no. he did. Yeah, we, we, as soon as we got old enough, old enough to drive a tractor, we were out there driving a tractor. And, and I remember I used to have to, in the summertime, chop some corn for the milk cows. And we had a little platform back in a Model A car that I drove out to the cornfield and, and uh, put the corn on that and then hauled it to the barn to feed it, like a green chop, I guess you'd call it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. back then. Mm -hmm. You mentioned going to uh, you know, farmers union activities. What sort of thing were they doing? Like, were you members of locals out here? Or? Well, at that time, yes, we well, we grew up in Pleasant Lake Township, mm -hmm. and there was the Pleasant Lake local, which included, I suppose, as far as I know, that was the only one uh, south of Plankington. The rest, there's one north of Plankington, and as far as I know, there's one west of Plankington. But that's the only locals I knew of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, what did they do at those meetings? I uh, see pictures of like little kids with with accordions and all kinds of things, and I figured those were taken at local meetings. It could be. I I really don't remember too much about what we did there. Oh, you know, yeah. I suppose the whole grown up had the meeting. I don't know exactly what I kids did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, where did you go to school at? Then? Did you, was it a country school? Uh, yes, I, so the first eight years I went to Pleasant Lake Consolidated, which was a a brick school, the whole township went to that school. And uh, that school was built in 1916, and and then they consolidated back in, what was it, eight, uh, 68, when all the schools had to be in a 12-year in a school district. So that uh, township split, and half went to Plankton and half to Stickney. And, uh, but after I got out of eighth grade, I went to Four years of high school in Stickney, South Dakota. Okay. What was school like back in those days? Maybe out in the country school, any kind of unusual or interesting things happened? Richard Harvard was telling me that uh, they had a family of skunks living under where he went to school at. Oh. I thought, you, didn't you do anything about it? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't remember that. We did have, <laughs> have an outdoor toilet, of course. At that time, they didn't have running water, although we did have a well at that school. So, and, and the because it was a, well, it's actually built for high school, but by the time I got in school, it was the high school had quit. It was just two rooms in the upper level of the building and had kind of an auditorium below and a kitchen and had a big old uh, boiler down there. Had steam heat in there and a the boiler. Was that kind of large for a country school as, as those things went? Oh, uh, yes. Things? Well, at that time, yes, because uh, the, the whole, they didn't, uh, it had, uh, the whole township went to school. Most mm -hmm. of the other townships had four or five small schools scattered oh, across the townships okay. where they'd go, uh, all eight grades went to one one room and uh, I, as far as I know, from, from 15 to 25 kids were in that, each one of them buildings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did you have in, in this one then? Well, there was four, about average of four in my grade. I know it's myself and two girls, we went the, the whole eight years together, and then from time to time there would be the other would come and go. Mm -hmm. So I suppose there was somewhere in the 30, 30 to 35 uh, uh, kids in the whole eight grades, mm -hmm. maybe 40 mm -hmm. at one time. Okay. That would probably be average. Yeah, yeah. Small town schools are probably are in that category. It <laughs> could be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you you would have graduated when in about 19 from grade school or yeah, high, uh, high school high school I graduated in 1956 1956 okay and did you, you didn't did you go to college no I never did go to college I think about going to, but we never I never did anyway I just stayed home and farmed until oh. I got married and still kept on farming okay where did you meet your wife uh, Sharon? Well, uh, mainly through the church. And oh, okay. We went to church together. And, and, uh, okay, what church was that? St. Paul Lutheran in Stickney. Okay, okay. And uh, when did you guys get married? We got married in 1962. 62, okay. Um, you went into farming right away, then there comes the question of the military. Did you, that was back pre-Vietnam, really, when you, got, when you got out of high school, so. Yes, I, I didn't go to 
Didn't join up in the National Guard until 1961. Okay, so you were, you were in the National Guard. Six years in the yeah. Guard and mm -hmm. six months on active duty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the fall of 61, uh, I went to uh, active duty until spring of 62. Okay, where did they send you to? Well, uh, I spent You didn't three. have to go to Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> went, <laughs> uh, I think my basic was in... Uh, Fort Leonard Wood, uh, Missouri, and then I went to uh, Fort Gordon, Georgia to signal school. Okay. We were a headquarters battery in artillery, and I was in the communications uh, part of it. Okay. And you have kids. Uh, yes, we have three daughters. Your kids a little bit? We have three daughters. Uh, the oldest two live in Aberdeen, South Dakota, and the youngest one is in Brandon, South Dakota now. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're all married, and we have uh, five grandsons. <laughs> They're oh, all grandsons. Okay. So you went from all girls to all boys. Yes. From one generation to the next. Okay. Um, are any of them involved in farming at all? No, they aren't. They aren't. No. Okay. How did you know, and, I, and I guess you've sort of already answered this question, but how did you get involved with farmers' union and cooperatives? You sound like your family was always almost. Yes, my dad was a strong farmer's union and co-op. Uh, I remember back before Stickney had a uh, co-op here, he'd go to Mitchell and we'd get oil and oil from the uh, Senex or well, it's farmer's union co-op in Mitchell and and put it in a 15-gallon barrel in the back of the car and bring it home and so <laughs> he he was uh, he used uh, farmer's union products. Okay. Okay, the old green and yellow truck didn't come down here at, at that yet at that point, or well, no, we we did get we our gasoline from the uh, the walk delivery in in Dickney at the gas station, mm, which okay. which the Senex bought out. Oh, okay. Spricks gas station it was. Mm-hmm. And Farmers Union was almost synonymous with the co-op. Uh, well, yes, activity. Uh, uh, yes, mm -hmm. yes. What was the history of local co-ops here? You mentioned the, 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 the founding of the co-op in, in Stickney of the Aurora Co-op Oil, but there's an elevator there too. Yes, the uh, co-op elevator in Stickney started in about 1938, as far as I know, and it's still going, although it's uh, quite small yet. There's mm -hmm. uh, just, well, two employees and a secretary, a part-time secretary is about yep. what they got. And uh, I noticed on Main Street uh, when I got down here that there was the sign from a former co-op there. There was a creamery. Oh yeah. At one time, would you remember that? Was that still in operation? When you well, when I was young, yes. Uh, we it looked like it was started in 1928, if I remember mm -hmm. the date on the building. I think it probably went through um, into the 50s before they closed. Mm -hmm. I remember we'd take the cream up there and you'd you'd put it on that big old scale and, and weigh it when you brought it in, it's cream can and all. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course the cream was from, we'd separate the, the milk at home and, and take the cream to town, I don't know, probably once a week, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Was that a farmer's union creamery? Uh, we it was a co-op creamery, yes yeah. it was, yeah. Associated with, I think it was like Union Equity up at Aberdeen, it was kind of a headquarters. It could be, I never knew how it was associated, but they had a manager and, and an employee mm -hmm. or two, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and that was was that the first co-op around here, or do you know? That well, it been, its building says 1928, so that'd be um, earlier than the elevator. Probably was, as far as I know. The elevator did have, was kind of a a different organization. Exactly how it worked before that, I don't know. I'd have to probably get back in their history and see once. But uh, seemed like it was kind of a different organization. It was. Whether it was exactly a co-op, I don't know for sure. Okay. But uh, uh, what was it about cooperatives that you liked? You've been involved in them a long time, and so was your dad and the rest of the family. Well, it's just that you're you're working for your having working for yourself. I mean, so it's uh, you uh, sell to yourself and and but like in, on the Oil company, you buy products from yourself because you're you're a member in a, of the organization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When were you uh, first elected to the? Uh, well, 
you were a county off farmers union officer down here. When did when did that happen? Well, I don't really remember. In fact, I was secretary of the Pleasant Lake local. I okay. remember after at first. Mm -hmm. I suppose it was shortly after we were married. I don't know yeah. for sure. I yeah, okay. Don't really know. And then that was probably back in the well. About the time, well, early 60s, I assume. I guess I don't know for sure. But then the, the county's organization was getting smaller, so I think Pleasant Lake was the last local to dissolve in Pleasant, in Aurora County, and just went all to the county organization then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, boy, I was a yeah, county officer too back in that area at the time, but I don't remember. What, what I did for sure. <laughs> Probably secretary too, I don't know. Okay. And you were, you were then also elected to the board of the, uh, of the uh, co-op oil company. When did, when, you, when did you go on that board? Mm. I think it was 1969. Okay. Yeah. And you were on there for how long? I served on there for 18 years. Okay. I got a plaque down in the office. Like All right. Um, were you involved as in other co-ops around here? You know, you probably were you involved in the elevator? Well, not as far as a uh, board member. Yeah. Of course, I patronized it all the time. Yeah. Just about mm -hmm. as far as feed and that yeah. probably. Some of the like you were talking about the cream. Were you doing that? What about like the uh, take a lot of interest in like the rural electric cooperative? Which one is it that serves here? Is that the one out of Mitchell in your county or another one? Uh, yes, it's Central Electric now. Central Electric. Uh, most of the time it had been Tri-County Electric, which yeah. was uh, the West Four half, or West Four counties of Central Electric. They, mm -hmm. they combined here about seven, eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, is there a communications co-op in this area? We've got um, Mid-State Telephone of Kimball is our provider here. Mm -hmm. And they, yeah, they've been going since um, the mid-60s, I think. It was an independent, independent uh, company in Stickney, and uh, when Midstate started up, but uh, it was combined into Midstate at that time. When you uh, first uh, were serving on the board of the co-op here, uh, you remember were things would you would you say they were easier or harder than they are uh, they were later on? Oh. That would have been in the early 70s, so they were probably, it wasn't, seems like a lot of co-ops made quite a bit of money in those days. Back then, you know, it, it would seem like it was a lot easier to, for the co-ops to, to operate then. There wasn't so much competition from the chemical companies and everybody else. And uh, Yeah, we always uh, had a good, uh, good bottom line all the way through. Uh, into the 80s, I guess it was, and then it started getting tougher. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, do you recall, like in the 70s, there was, of course, there was the big uh, uh, gasoline shortages and fuel shortages when there was the oil embargo. Uh, mm -hmm. Did that cause any problems around here uh, for supply, or do you remember? I don't remember exactly. I, I'm sure there was uh, some uh, shortages, but uh, it seemed like we always got plenty of fuel. I mean, we had enough to operate the farm anyway, that mm -hmm. I remember. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and uh, fertilizer was plentiful and available? Well, back in the 70s, we didn't use a whole lot of fertilizer. We'd, it seemed like we'd fertilize the, the small grain and very seldom fertilize the corn ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. that was, you know, minimal to, compared to what we use now. Were there any other kind of issues that you had to deal with? Uh, what sort of things does a board, you know, I, I guess I had not to ask that particular question to you, but yet what are the kind of things that you dealt with as a, as a co-op board? You, you had to hire a manager, I suppose. Yeah, that's a hire manager, and we usually uh, discussed, and as far as equipment, we'd, we'd uh, you know, buy that or, you know, have a say in how that was purchased and all that and in the buildings. Like in Dickney here, in the, the the station building was built just several, three or four years before I got on the board, so that was like a new new station building. Mm -hmm. Everything was pretty nice then, but but then uh, 
Yeah, yeah the, the fertilizer building was, well, the dry fertilizer, and, and we bought uh, anhydrous tank, seemed like during, well, it was on there, and we was going, you know, using anhydrous fertilizer, which now they, they don't use anymore because of the liability part of it. They just got out of that several years ago. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but at the time when I got on, they were getting the LP gas out of a, a Senex a regional tank over by White Lake. Then later on, we bought a, a bulk tank here. So it uh, probably back early 80s, I guess. Yeah, you would have been uh, in high school, I suppose, at the time when they organized the. Uh, uh, the co-op here are almost out of high school. Yeah, I just got out of high school, yeah. and I think uh, I think uh, I stayed home and farm, and Dad went out and organized. He went out. And so he was the guy who went out and sold chairs. Him and him and uh, Merle Heathen probably, and I would say maybe Ralph Dykstra and Elmer Peters were probably three of the three or four of the main ones that went out and sold chairs for that. And I would say during the fall of 1956 or summer and fall was when they did a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Did they work with somebody from the regional then? Uh, yes, they did. Uh, I can't remember his name anymore. Probably if I heard it, I'd know it. But yeah. uh, they did have somebody from the regional that was helping them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Does the office help any too, or no? Not that I know of. I, they may have, but I don't mm -hmm. remember. Okay. All right. Uh, I talked a little bit that, about that with Ron. Oh, like, okay. Uh, yeah, he, he wasn't around there then. No, no, but he kind of was a little bit aware of some Well, yeah, history. he's fairly close, and I'm sure yeah. he did, yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you, uh, you remember meeting and working with interesting people? You know, anybody you want to talk about that you worked with over the years? What is, you mean as far as the co-op business, or? Um, yeah, well, co-op and farm. Well, let's talk about co-ops right now. Okay. Uh, managers. Uh, well, yeah, we, uh, we went to a lot of uh, the regional annual meetings. Most of them were in Minneapolis back then. In fact, we before I was on the board, we, Sharon and I went after we were married, uh, our, uh, nobody else wanted to go, and uh, we were friends with the Bud Smith, who was the manager at that time. So we went went down to there, and we went a few times then, and, and uh, off and on through the years, I probably went to 12, 15 annual meetings. The only one out of Minneapolis, we went to Spokane, Washington, one time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was the co-op pretty well usually represented at the annual meetings? Normally, at that time, when I was on the board, usually if somebody was, yes. Mm -hmm. Who are some of the people you served on the board with? Well, starting out, <laughs> it's a pretty big list, I guess. Yeah, probably so. You don't need to try to remember them all. Well, some of the old, stick out. like Elmer course. Peters was on the board. He was the chairman when I got on there. And, and uh, oh, about, uh, oh, Dewey DeBoer and uh, Cliff Gunther, um, Well. Uh, Olson from Plankton was on when I got on, and then later on Morgan Olson, his brother, was on. And uh, then later on, you know, Lloyd Klein and Anders Bond was on, and uh, Gordon Harris. Let's see, Joe Dykstra was on. He might have got on after I. That was Ralph's boy. He. I think he got on after I was gone, and uh, well, Junior DeWard, he was on when I, towards the end there. I'd uh, probably have to <laughs> get a list and could find most of them. But. He mentioned Bud, and, um, and you, you were on when Ron was hired over there. Yes, yeah, I was the chairman at that time. Yeah, and. Uh, any other managers that were here when you, when, who was the manager here when you started on the board? Well, Bud Smith was the manager when I started, and then uh, about the mid-70s, mid uh, he, he quit, and uh, Glenn Leitenberg served for five years. Okay. 
and he's still working for Cenex. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. after he went when he quit here as manager, he went and worked with Cenex as a, I think in the oh I don't know hardware department, something like that, field staff. And then mm -hmm. I'm sure he's had other jobs since then. But we just talked to him last uh, last summer, and he's still still doing some work there. Uh, was there a lot of uh, assistance and a good working relationship with the regional cooperative in those days? Yeah, we always had a field staff person that we could contact, and mm -hmm. yeah, I thought we had a good relationship with them. Mm -hmm. uh, in visiting yesterday with, the, with Ron, he expressed some concern about the, 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 the situation that, they, that, the, that the independent co-ops face today that where they're uh, competing with their supplier, uh, which who owns some of the com competing businesses in yeah, we, well, since you went off the board, but. pretty well. Yeah, they didn't really regionalize until uh, yeah I was off the board. See mm -hmm. that uh, yeah. now that both Mitchell on the east and Corsica on the south are all regional uh, companies, I guess you'd say it. And between uh, Stickney and uh, White Lake, we're kind of sitting out here by ourselves here yet. It seems to have created a little bit of an abrasive relationship, maybe with the that didn't exist before with the regional between the regional and the local co-op, and that they feel like they're being uh, that the competition isn't exactly 100 percent fair. Yeah, that's right. I know. Uh, well, the reason that the two uh, Mitchell had a elevator and a oil company, and now they combine. And excuse me, they said they did it so they could build a big fertilizer terminal there and uh, at first they didn't say that they said that the smaller uh, independent co-ops couldn't uh, get supplies from that terminal but now I talked to the regional director and they said they'll be able to get their supplies from there and then then uh, have to get their own you know because mm -hmm. most of our fertilizer in the past this we're I'm talking dry fertilizer yeah. here in the past, came out of Sioux City, mm -hmm. as far as I know. The always, the truckers would haul grain down and bring fertilizer back. Is you know you're probably not as close to it as you were when you were on the board of directors, but uh, uh, there obviously are a lot of challenges, not just that one facing uh, cooperatives. What seems like the biggest change to you for from when you first went on the the co-op board as to, as to today as far as the uh, issues facing uh, a co-op like the one here in Stickney, a uh, uh, co-op of that size. Well, yeah, when I got on, you know, the, the petroleum was a big part of the, the business at that time and service, but now it's more to the fertilizer and chemical is the, the big uh, volume part of it. and. Uh, and now they got into seed too, more in the seed with the chemical companies combining the technology of uh, oh, seed and uh, herbicide together to, you know, like uh, your, um, what do you say, your, uh, I'm trying to think of how the word, but when you, instead of using chemical to kill the bugs, you use the, the gene, uh, <laughs> what do you call that seed when it's, uh, oh, uh, modified, genetically yeah. modified, uh, yeah, seed. So that they, they kind of, the chemical kind of got a, a kind of a uh, corner on that, that market. And I think that's kind of tough to, to compete in that market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, going to another area related to co-ops, how important do you think co-op education is? Well, I think it's very important that uh, everybody can learn about the co-op education. And, well, like, uh, not, it's not only farm co-ops, but our local grocery store is, is affiliated with a, a co-op, which is called Affiliated, out of Nebraska. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, you don't realize how many co-ops are around, you know, not only just we're kind of grew up with farm co-op, but there's a lot of other supply co-ops too. 
Do you think that uh, younger producers today have the same level of loyalty to the cooperative as was prevalent back in the era when your dad helped to organize the co-op here in Sydney? No, on, on the general, it isn't as, as loyal, no. There's, there's still a few that will, are, but uh, there's some that, you know, they still go by, uh, I guess, what their banker tells them when they get a, you know, uh, to uh, be as efficient as they can, and if they buy something a little cheaper somewhere else, they do it. A little less tendency to think toward the long term uh, future as opposed to this season. And, uh, That's what it appears to be, season. yes. Mm -hmm. I remember John Scoggy, who was a state president, uh, used to like to tell us, uh, recite a poem about a guy thinking in terms of the future and people that come afterward. I think a lot of the co op people thought that way originally. Uh, and, you know, you would think maybe it's, that's not the case necessarily anymore with a lot of people. It seems like it, yeah. Although I'm sure there's still some of them that it, that like to, you know they're, they're still quite minded, but it, mm -hmm. like say they still aren't quite as loyal as, as like they yeah. were. Yeah, you have preserved your co-op here though in Sydney. Yes, we have two of them. Two of them. Yeah. And now everybody's been able to do that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Do you think? Do uh, you think cooperatives cooperate enough with each other? Is there, a, is there a, any kind of a relationship between the two co-ops at Stickney, for example? Do they work together at all in the area where they might work together? Not really, no. It, yeah. uh, at one time, when I was on the board, we were talking about merging, but uh, we kind of had a meeting and a vote, and uh, it was voted not to merge the two of them. I think the feeling was that uh, the oil company was doing real well and the elevator was kind of in trouble at that time so they, they thought it'd drag the oil company down is what the opinions I heard mm -hmm. afterwards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about with the surround, the cooperatives and surrounding communities? You know, you have one over here in White Lake. And I see there's a Senex facility at least up in Plankington now. How did that get there? Well, the one in Plankington is part of Stickney's co-op. Oh, it is? Okay. Approximately okay. 10 years ago, they bought out a, a private a person up there who had the station in the vault, so they bought that. It was, um, yeah, 10, 12 years ago, somewhere in there. Okay. So that's really part of Stickney's uh, co-op. Mm -hmm. And the one in White Lake is, uh, that, that was started about the same time as Stickney's. Mm -hmm. And they, they seem to be doing quite well. They, they, at one time we we were asked by the regional to to, to uh, consider merging with White Lake. That was well, back in the, I'm sure it was probably in the early 80s. And our, our board <laughs> decided not to uh, go into any merger talks at that time. Mm -hmm. So. And you, you had kind of, in the South, you always had kind of Corsica City down. Yeah, Corsica was a- really strong co-op. A strong co-op, they were, uh, well organized before Stickney was. I think they started back in the late 30s, mm -hmm. and they were a strong co-op then. And I suppose maybe what Mitchell would you bump into Mitchell's territory at all? Well, yes, uh, because Mitchell. Uh, well, not only one. That would have been an old one too. That was an old one too, because I remember Dad getting oil there when uh, it was uh, they had the oil station down along the railroad tracks in the south end of Main Street, and at some time. They, they started a, a, a satellite station in uh, uh, Storla, which is part of Aurora County, uh, just a mile from Aurora, from the Davidson County line, I guess it is. But that is still part of Mitchell's co-op there. So the, the northeast part of uh, Aurora County would be included in Mitchell's Yeah, those were station. all uh, affiliated with Senex. Um, yeah. were, were there any of them around here that weren't? I, I know Wessington Springs, of course, was a, was was a farmland affiliate. But. Yes, it was. And then, well, Parkston was a strong farmland yeah. affiliated. Yeah. And about the time that Senex, we started the Aurora Co-op in Stickney, another uh, oil company or another station owner sold his building to a uh, farmland co-op or the farmland affiliated co-op, so there were two co-ops in Stickney. Mm -hmm. 
mm. for probably uh, 15 years or so really? through the late 50s and I don't know exactly when they, they closed that probably into the uh, they might have stayed, closed the station, but they still kept a, a bulk uh, L, uh, LP uh, plant going probably into the 70s sometime. Okay, now they were were they affiliated with some other uh, cooperative around here, or were they just a freestanding local co-op there? No, it was affiliated with Parkson Co-op. With Parkson, Co-op, okay. And, Parkson. And at that time, Parkson had uh, one in Parkston, Armour, Ethan, and Stickney. So, and... Uh, as far as I know, they still have affiliated in, in Armour and Ethan, but uh, mm -hmm. they, like I say, they closed the one in Tickney back in the 70s, I think. Yeah, yeah. Was there any difference between the people who were uh, patrons of one or the other? Oh. Was there like an antagonism or something that there was caused probably. some people to want to go to something else that was maybe not? I'm sure there was, yes. I, I'm sure there was some people that didn't get along with one, mm -hmm. one manager, so they went to the other one. And, and uh, there was, yeah, there was kind of a divide there, I guess you'd say, though. I would say that most of them that were good Farmers Union members still stayed at the Aurora Co op, and uh, other people patronized the other one. I, I think it was kind of the divide point. Mm -hmm. But there really wasn't enough business for the two of them for, on the long term, apparently. No, not after, you know, things got more uh, concentrated than that. At, at the mm -hmm. time it was. Mm -hmm. there... <coughs> you, uh, you, you, you talked a little bit about the, uh, the, the, the merger proposal that, uh, that existed at one time between uh, 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 the co-op here and the one over at White Lake. Uh, did, did, did uh, folks around here, did they have any particular feelings about uh, mergers and that sort of thing? Was it, was, uh, was it a question of local control or something? Probably so. Uh, what I remember at that time, the White Lake Co-op was in financial trouble. And I think the regional co-op just asked that, you know, we combine and, and make it more um, efficient. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, Seemed like the board didn't go along with that, anyways. They thought probably that that uh, would drag this one down. But since then, they've been doing quite well, I think. Mm -hmm. Do you what what what's your feeling these days about about potential mergers and regionalizations in general? Do you think any of those are good or bad or indifferent? Well, as far as It'd probably it'd be all right to, to combine some of these local ones yet you know, and make them, if they could make them stronger and more buying power. Uh, I don't really agree that everything should be under the under the regional control because if you get the, if they're paying, you know, signing the checks or the paychecks for the employees, that's where the most of the control is going to be, even though they may have directors here. I still don't think that they're going to have a whole lot of say about it. Um, I, no. did, do you know what happened in the surrounding ones down here when they when like hire managers? Is it the regional that hires the manager, or, or does the advisory committee? You don't deal with that here because no, we don't deal with it. Uh, I I would say the regional has quite a bit to say about who is, yeah. who is the manager. Right. Um, How important is participation in a local cooperative? You, we talked about the level of loyalty maybe not being what it was, but uh, you obviously you have to continue to have some kind of level of participation in the local community if, uh, if the co-op is going to continue. So how important is that that people pay attention to what's happening with their co-op? And, and what could happen if they didn't? Well, yeah, of course. Like here in the past six, eight years when uh, I, I'll go back to probably uh, your fertilizer and chemical, uh, especially chemical now lately when they had this Roundup uh, chemical coming in, the generics. People were wanting to buy more of the generic and our local co-op was tied more in with the with the, the Monsanto part of it. So I think if you don't sell enough, they kind of got a bonus. You don't 
if you don't sell enough volume, you don't get the bonus, and that's where all your profit is. So it looks to me like if a people they go buy the generic from somewhere else and then wouldn't patronize the co-op here as much. Fertilizer a little bit different because there's more the bulk is is uh, it's more harder to haul it around like that, more you know, travel expense or like that. But this con this chemical is getting so concentrated you can haul a lot of dollars with a chemical in the back of your pickup. You know, a little tank will probably hold <laughs> I don't know. Maybe ten or fifteen thousand dollars worth of chemical on one pickup load. It always seems like you can put a lot more dollars into a container than you used to. <laughs> yeah. No matter what the in product fact, is, my, except green. My cousin, he he uh, uh, sprayed application out in Montana, and he said he the chemical he'd have in a little container just in his cockpit, and when he he'd uh, uh, put uh, you know refuel refill it up, but he just uh, take it out of there and dump it in. The, Blend it in there, but the chemical is small, small volume anyway. And you, you, uh, the family have all been involved in Farmers Union over the years. We talked about that. We're, I think we're going to kind of go over to the Farmers Union area now for a while. You want to need a cookie or anything? Uh, yeah. I'll grab a cookie a little bit later. How about I'll some be coffee? able to hear myself chewing this <laughs> yeah, I, uh, on the recording, and I'll, I'll maybe have a cookie when we get done. Um, There were, uh, there were a lot of, uh, of, of locals around here, and uh, they're now all in the county. Uh, your, dad, your dad was County Farmers Union president, wasn't he, for some time? It seemed like I remember him being uh, attending a lot of meetings when I first started. Mm. Yeah, I mean, he's probably an was. officer, anyhow. It seemed like the later years, uh, Elmer Peters was president before yeah. I got on there. Yeah. I remember that. And yeah. uh, but he was always an officer. Mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't say he was president yeah. all the time. Yeah. Um. And uh, apparently, there continued to be an important relationship between the farmers union and the co-ops in the in the county. Oh yes. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. When did do you remember when you became County Farmers Union president? Uh, well, yeah, I think it was right after I got off the Senate board. Okay. Elmer said, "Well, you don't have anything to do now, so yeah. you can be president." So, so it's probably about in um, '87, probably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you were elected to the state board. What year was that? Oh, let's see, about 10 years ago. Yeah, when uh, you you would have replaced Irvin Goldhammer? Irvin Ir Ir Goldhammer, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it would, yeah, it would have been 10 years ago, so the fall of um, 95, probably. Mm -hmm. and you were on for how many years then? I was on eight years. Eight years, and, okay. Yeah, it's off two years right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you like to talk a little bit about some of the Farmers Union people you had a chance to work with over the years that uh, impressed you or didn't impress you, <laughs> as the case may be. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I mean, it, it was a great experience being on the board. You get to meet people from all over the country, all over the state. And, mm -hmm. uh, and in, in fact, prior to that, I knew a few of them through Senex because I was on a, a regional or a kind of a regional uh, uh, Go back to the Senate part anyway. Uh, regional. Uh, so we had a board, a directors association is what it was. And, yeah, I remember that Dick Paston from Lake Preston was on, and uh, golly, there was a few other. That's kind of where it started up in that area. Mm -hmm. And I was on that and until until I got off the local board, I guess. Do those back exist anymore? As far as I know, it doesn't no, exist anymore. I think the manager still got association, but uh, yeah. we did. I don't know. We probably went for about ten years, probably somewhere in there. But I guess that's getting a little off the subject. Yeah. Then. But yeah, we like say you get to meet people from all over the state, and, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, well, you probably had a chance to, even though you were well, you were county president 
probably back then. Did you working with uh, Lee Swenson at all? Oh yeah, so I went. I would went to a lot of state state uh, conventions anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I even went to. Uh, I remember when he got got elected to, to the state president, but I didn't vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought we should have a, a true farmer on mm -hmm. as president instead of uh, instead of a uh, guy that <laughs> come up through the ranks. I guess you'd say. Mm -hmm. I think Paul Simmons is the one that ran against him at that time. That's right. Um, uh, Dallas Tomsager, chance to work with Dallas. Well, yeah, um, well, yeah. We went to a lot of uh, your uh, county councilors meetings and stuff. Is mainly back in then, that time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I see him yeah. two, three times a year. Yeah, yeah. And you were Dennis uh, Weiss was president when. You yeah, were he was before. president about a year, I think, before I got on yeah. somewhere in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, Anybody else that you, you want to talk talk about at all that uh, you had a chance to work with, whether they were field staff or or whatever? Oh well, I, I kind of think uh, well, Maynard Wetmeyer was field staff, and he'd come to a lot of our co-op meetings, and uh, everybody enjoyed him. He always had a good sense of humor and could tell some jokes and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I remember he he'd come down to our Senex meeting quite a few times. And, yeah. Okay. And, uh, um, and you also you get a chance to go to some National Farmers Union conventions? Yes, I did. Uh, I think the first, well, uh, I think they had one in Sioux Falls back in uh, probably the late 80s, early 90s. I think that's probably the first one I went mm, to. Okay. And then uh, I was the one to delegate to Des Moines, Iowa. Probably in about the mid '90s. That was before I was on the board. Yeah, Des Moines was in 1992. Ninety-two falls in '93. So oh, okay. Well, right maybe between there. the two, anyway. Okay, I don't remember. Yeah, I went to Des Moines the first time I wanted to delegate, and then, then I went three, four times as a board member when I was on the board. Went to Nashville, uh, Albuquerque, Salt Lake. The only ones I can think of right now. So probably every other year or something like that. Mm -hmm. Every third year, mm -hmm. I can't remember exactly. Yeah. Uh, how about uh, working in clients? Did you want any of those? I think I just went to one of them back in uh, about '94, '93, mm '94, -hmm. somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, how was that experience for you? Oh, that was, that was a good experience. It, uh, you guys should take a few more days and, and look around. We did, we were there one day and went to the Arlington National Cemetery and uh, and went to the, some of the Smithsonian places. And I remember it was up in the Washington Monument, took the elevator up there. I don't know, do they let, let them do that anymore? I think they do again. At one time, they, I think uh, after 9-11, I think they quit a lot of that. Well, they were doing a lot of rebuilding. Rebuilding. And, uh, and re uh, re restoration work on the monument. Yeah. And it's open again now. So. Yeah, I remember they had the, the Vietnam Wall was up then already when I went anyway. And, uh, yeah, I should uh, try to maybe go back again sometime. I don't know if we get the job or chance to. I guess we could if we participate in the fly-in, but mm -hmm. haven't done that. Um, and your your family have all gone in the in the uh, youth program. Were you involved in the youth program when you were a kid? Was well, there an education program down here in Aurora County. We did have an education program, but I I don't think I ever finished the torchbearer award. I did go to state camp. Mm -hmm. I think it was in here in that uh, 4-H grounds when that was new there at the dormitory. I mean, that's the only one I remember. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, apparently. It, I don't know at the time we didn't <laughs> wasn't too much involved. I mean, it didn't want that uh, active in it. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Um, but your daughters, did they were they all in the youth program or not? Well, they were on the local and county level, but they never went to too many state uh, camps okay. either. Okay. If they did, they wasn't um, too many. And Sharon has been active in the education program, which is the late years has been pretty active. Yeah, she has. Uh, what, she got her pin here. Was that last year? 
Karen, how many how many years pin did you get? Maybe she doesn't listen to me. Are you talking to me? Yeah. What? How many years were you a youth director? What the pin you got? How many years was that? <laughs> She's gonna look. I think ten or fifteen, I don't know okay. for sure. But my mother was always uh, <laughs> kind of youth director too. Before, oh, okay. After when our kids were growing up, anyway. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, how important is the education program around here now? I think it's, it's probably more active here than it has been for a while. There's a lot of kids who go through camp here. Yeah, we actually since uh, Cheryl Atlas and kind of pushing the kids and well our own kids but they uh, mm -hmm. I think a, a few years ago Roar County has led the state camp participation for yeah. I don't know two three years or mm -hmm. one time I think there are 10 or 11 from our county out there out of 80 so it's a pretty good percentage yeah. but she, she's got, been real good at, at keeping the kids and getting them inspired to go and mm -hmm. they do some membership work now too they they get points if they sign up members so yeah. What? It was 15 years last year. Oh, okay. okay. Sharon was involved mm -hmm. 15 years. And okay. Um, how has the community around here changed over the years? Uh, you know, we talked about the Farmers Union and the cooperatives. Uh, uh, how have things changed for the community? Is it? Uh, and then, uh, do you like how it changed? Oh, I see. Well, that's yeah, kind of hard to say. Yeah, it, yeah I, I think, it, of course, their eyes are going to change with the times, you know, and all mm -hmm. the farms, a lot of the farms are getting bigger, of course, you know. It, yeah. it, right, right locally, I, uh, at one time I was counting, I think I got six neighbors under 50 years old, which is kind of within, uh, oh, um, Probably all within two or three miles of here, two and a half, three miles. So, you know, it, uh, there's still some around that are, aren't uh, expanding that much. Uh, like mm -hmm. one fella, he's only got a half section, but he raised a lot of hogs. And, and uh, some of them got, do have some other part-time jobs, you know, that they, mm -hmm. they farm, but they still work off the farm some. If you were advising somebody, you know, the, the had thought perhaps about maybe getting involved in either Farmers Union or the co-op here or both. Uh, what would you advise them today? Well, I'd encourage them to to uh, participate if they can. Yes. Yeah, especially like say buy your product locally. I know a lot, some people say, well, they uh, they don't want to buy, you know, the the products that get a good return for the co-op, but then. When they want their tires fixed, when nobody else will fix them, they'll come here to do it, and then they complain that the price is too high, but nobody else will do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess my final question is, well, i got actually a question, a couple of questions. What are you doing now that you're retired? Do you, do you have more free time, or uh, are you traveling some, or are you still, you're still farming here, obviously. Well, we're still going to do the crops, although this... Uh, Starting the first of the year, I, I leased my cows or to the neighbor and kind of on shares, and uh, but I still got I'm still going to keep some heifer calves around and raise replacement myself for a few years. And, and uh, as far as the crops, I I don't only got about 250 acres of crop ground that we really raised, and that's kind of a uh, it, <laughs> about a two week job, I guess you'd say. You plant it and have the co-op spray it, and then you harvest it. So, mm -hmm. in fact, some of the harvesting I ha hired done anyway. So, sure. kind of gradually getting out of it. Okay. Are you an optimist or a pessimist when it comes to the future? Do you think things are going to get better or worse or stay the same? As far as farming? Well, as far as everything. Everything. Well, I was pretty optimistic when I was growing up and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether I'm quite that good now. <laughs> I guess you gotta you gotta say that you gotta stay optimistic that uh, things are gonna change and you gotta change with them. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I think that just about does it for the questions that I have. We've been visiting with Ken Arts. Um, thank you for participating in the Cooperative Legacy Project, and good luck to you. Oh, yeah, thank you, too.